If you watch television, you re might remember the Soup Nazi from the television series Seinfeld. The eponymous episode originally aired on November 2nd, 1995, as the sixth episode of the seventh season of this popular show. The Soup Nazi was played by Larry Thomas, who was nominated for an Emmy Award based on this one episode. The character was very particular about who ate his soup. His common refrain for those he deemed unworthy for any number of reasons, No soup for you! On the topic of no soup, and indeed no food at all, I have frequently spoken about loss of habitat for human animals in this space. Such an event can occur rapidly, contrary to what you hear from engineers, corporate media personalities, and paid climate scientists. The example presented in this short video is focused on food. I love food. I'm going to miss it. I know I'll miss food because I have inadvertently fasted a few times while on speaking tours. It was never my idea. In the transition from one host to another, I simply did not get fed for more than 36 hours. These days, the bathroom scale reminds me that I could stand to miss a meal or two, although I'd rather make that decision on my own. On my own, that is, with a nod to my virtual absence of free will, as with other organisms here on Earth. Apparently, writing about hunger is analogous to buying a red Dodge Charger. One rarely notices such a car until buying one. After that, they seem to be everywhere. In this case, my mentioning hunger in a recent weekly hubris essay has caused stories about hunger to appear daily in my email inbox and also in my daily news feed. As usual, the evidence points to a dire outcome for your favorite species, Homo sapiens. From the peer-reviewed Journal of Industrial Ecology on November 3, 2020 comes an update to the renowned Limits of Growth. The original version of Limits to Growth was famously published by the Club of Rome in 1972, shortly after this non-profit collection of scientists and business leaders was created in 1968 at one of the oldest and most prestigious European scientific institutions, Academia de Lincey. Subsequent updates to the original version of Limits to Growth were written by Dennis Meadows and colleagues, as indicated in the references section of the latest update, written by Gaia Harrington. I have included a link to the peer-reviewed paper by Harrington in the description of this video, and also in the attendant blog post at GuyMcPherson.com. In fact, I've included the entire script of this video in the attendant blog post so that you can easily find all the data referenced here. Figure 1 of the paper by Harrington indicates that business as usual, the path we are currently following, leads to the rapid reduction of global food production in 2028. If you, can, if you believe you can overcome the impending collapse of global food production, welcome to the Club of Naivete. I, too, used to believe I simply needed to grow and store my own food to ensure my continued survival. Upon realizing it was the monetary system driving us to extinction, I exited the monetary system. I lived off-grid for more than a decade, initially in southern rural New Mexico, USA, and later in western Belize, Central America. Along the way, I later discovered the aerosol masking effect, as described in many essays at GuyMcPherson.com, and also in this space. Never mind the extreme inconvenience with unattended nuclear facilities imploding, thus leading to loss of stratospheric ozone, and therefore extremely rapid planetary heating, as I've also described in this space. Only loss of aerosol masking as a result of reduced industrial activity would do the trick. This phenomenon would be completed about five days after industrial activity is reduced, according to Professor James Hansen in many presentations and interviews. Such an event will cause a sufficiently rapid rate of environmental change to cause the demise of our species and most, if not all, others on Earth. The rapid rate of environmental change in the subsequent wake of our own extinction, or the extremely rapid rate of environmental change as Earth loses stratospheric ozone, will bring about the loss of most or all life on Earth, including human life. These factors indicate, yet again, that we are all connected. Believing otherwise has brought us to the edge of extinction. There seems little doubt it'll take us over the edge, and far sooner than I'd like. If you need more evidence that we are all inextricably connected, consider the new strain of bird flu threatening wildlife in North America. According to University of Georgia research scientist Rebecca Polson, who has studied bird flus for 15 years, quote, we are in the midst of a completely unprecedented wildlife disease outbreak in North America. We've never seen anything like this. 
end quote. According to the UK National Health Service, bird flu can, in rare cases, spread to humans. The peer-reviewed contribution from Gaia Harrington supports my long-time prediction regarding near-term human extinction. However, subsequent information published nearly two years after Harrington's paper provides additional dire support. Specifically, a blog post by Michael Snyder at the Economic Collapse blog indicates the collapse of global food production lies not in the near future of 2028. Rather, it's happening now. I rarely use blog posts to support my evidence-rich work, in part because the peer-reviewed literature is conservative. As a scientist, I tend towards conservatism with respect to accepting and promulgating information. However, the essay at the Economic Collapse blog is stunningly well supported with links that indicate collapse of the global food supply is already underway. Specifically, Snyder writes, quote, The food that isn't being grown in 2022 won't be on our store shelves in 2023. We are facing an absolutely unprecedented worldwide food crisis next year. End quote. Consider the first of three points in Snyder's essay indicating the near-term collapse of global food production. Quote, the hard red winter wheat crop in the United States this year was the smallest since 1963. But in 1963, there were only 182 million people living in this nation. Today, our population has grown to 329 million. End quote. The embedded link referencing 1963 leads to a September 5, 2022 article in the Washington Post. The essay at the Economic Collapse blog goes on to describe reduced productivity of rice, corn, and many other food items throughout the world. I've included a link to the relevant paper in the Economic Collapse blog in the description below and also at GuyMcPherson.com. The final of 33 points from Snyder leads to a quote, from United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres on July 18, 2022. Quote, we face a real risk of multiple famines this year, and next year could be even worse. End quote. The ability to grow, store, and distribute grains at a large scale has defined each civilization, including the current one. The inability to grow, store, and distribute grains such as rice and corn has led to the collapse of previous civilizations. Will the impending disasters in food production cause the collapse of the current version of civilization and therefore the extinction of all life on Earth? As much as I'd like to believe otherwise, a dose of rationality indicates the worst-case scenario is on the horizon. An insect apocalypse has gripped the world for several years, as reported in the peer-reviewed Biological Conservation in April 2019. Subsequent peer-reviewed confirmation for this idea came from the October 30th, 2019 issue of Nature. Links to all the papers I mention here can be found with ease at GuyMcPherson.com. How important are these invertebrates? Invertebrate organisms pollinate much of the food we eat, and they also decompose plant material into soil, thereby creating soil. They aerate existing soil and spread seeds from mature plants into other locations. Unfortunately, Heat waves are destroying pollen even before invertebrates can get to it, according to Yale University School of the Environment. In total, invertebrates are estimated to be worth trillions of dollars each year by the American Museum of Natural History. Nearly a billion people were hungry in 2021. Earth continues to overheat beyond the ability of our species and many others to adapt. Earth is already in the midst of a mass extinction event with no end in sight. Again, I suggest planetary hospice as a positive way forward. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. Click the bell when you subscribe so you'll be notified about future videos. Become a member of this channel for additional perks at as little as 99 cents per month. Mostly, though, thanks for watching.